Hi, welcome to Model Experiments Tracking and Registration using MLflow and Databricks. My name is Dash Desai, and I'm Director of Platform Technical Evangelism at StreamSets. Today we're going to talk about model experiments and automating some of the tasks that are involved, for example, data acquisition, preparation, and being able to track the model experiments. And we're also going to look at hands-on demo that I've prepared for you guys today. So let's get started. Machine learning models are only as good as the quality of data and the size of data sets used to train those models. And data has shown that data scientists spend around 80% of their time prepping and managing data for analysis, and about 57% of the data scientists regard cleaning and organizing data as the least enjoyable part of their work. This further validates the idea of MLOps and the need for collaboration between data scientists and data engineers. And during this crucial phase of data acquisition and preparation, data scientists usually identify what types of data sets are needed to train models and work closely with engineers to acquire the data from viable data sources. Now let's talk a little bit about model experiments, tracking, and registration. Experimentation is a big precursor to building models where data scientists take subsets of data sets and create several models in rapid, iterative manner. But without proper industry standards, they have to rely on manual tracking of models, inputs, hyperparameters, outputs, and any other such artifacts throughout the model experimentation and development process. Now this can result in a very long model deployment and release cycles which effectively prevents companies from adapting to dynamic changes, um, gaining competitive advantage, and in some cases also staying in compliance with changing governance and regulations. Now let's see how stream sets can help. Some of the common data sources for acquiring data sets for data science projects include Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage, Kafka, Hadoop, on-prem and cloud data warehouses. StreamSets provides easy-to-use graphical user interface for building smart data pipelines for both streaming and batch data flows. And you can build these smart data pipelines for fast data ingestion of large amounts of data from distributed systems, as well as all the common data sources that we just reviewed previously. Another aspect of the data ingestion process is the storage. In some cases, companies may already have a data lake or a data warehouse and in some cases, they may need to build one. StreamSets smart data pipelines are capable of connecting to existing data lakes and data warehouses, as well as have built-in capabilities of creating new ones. As part of building these smart data pipelines, data engineers can also perform some of the key transformations needed by data scientists. Some of the common transformations required during data preparation include data type conversion, renaming features, merging data sets, repartitioning, data set data format conversion from JSON to Parquet, for example, for efficient downstream analysis in Apache Spark, and so on. All of these transformations and many more are readily supported by StreamSets DataOps platform. So as we just discussed, StreamSets is a modern data integration platform for building smart data pipelines. They're really easy to build using drag and drop, they're cloud and platform agnostic. You have hundreds of connectors to choose from. The pipelines are really easy to scale and port without having to rewrite any of the parts of the pipelines. They're extensible, and you can also automate them really easily. MLflow is an open source platform for building end-to-end -end machine learning life cycles. And Databricks, as you all know, is a unified data analytics platform that provides a fully managed Apache Spark and MLflow as a service. Let's see how everything comes together. Now, before we dive into the demo, I just wanted to set the stage. This is a Transformer pipeline. Transformer is a modern transformation and Spark ETL engine that's part of the StreamSets DataOps platform. And with using MLflow and Databricks, this creates a powerful and seamless solution because Transformer can run on Databricks clusters and Databricks comes bundled with MLflow server. So the pipeline shown below is designed to load training data from S3, 
perform transformations like remove row ID, rename target column from MDEV to label, which is kind of required by Spark ML, train gradient boosted regression model in PySpark, repartition the data so it's all in a single file, and archive the training data in S3. Now I'd like to go back to this for a second. This is where all the magic happens. Not only are we creating a model experiment, but we're also integrating with MLflow to track and version model training code, data, hyperparameters, as well as register and manage models in a central repository in MLflow right from Transformer. This is critical for retraining models as well as to reproduce experiments. And we'll look at the code in more detail during the demo. Okay, let's get our hands dirty. So today we will look at some data ingestion and preparation pipelines. Then we will run a couple of pipelines that will create model experiments in MLflow on Databricks. And finally, I'll show you how to create these smart data pipelines. So before I switch screens, I just want to mention that we're going to be moving from tabs to tabs between different technologies, so please bear with me. All right, let's get started. Let's start with this one. This pipeline is designed to run on EMR. It ingests raw logs, transforms them, and stores them in different formats carrying various use cases and personas. And if you notice down below, there's a preview of data being displayed against live cluster, a very unique feature in the platform. As you can see, it's displaying all the columns currently being ingested along with their data types. And you can step through different transformations to see what exactly is happening. So in this case, some of the columns are being renamed. For example, number of purchases is being renamed to this, and similarly, number of views to this column. You can also write your custom code to make some of the adjustments that you need to make. In this case, we're removing coats around item column using Scala. And this is what the code looks like. And finally, the data is stored in Parquet, back in S3, and also in Redshift for use cases where you'd like to run some SQL queries. Next up is Sales Insights. This pipeline is designed to run on Spark for Azure HD Insight. It takes raw sales data in CSV format, transforms it, does some aggregations, and stores the prep data back in Azure Data Lake Storage. Again, down below you can see the preview of data against the live cluster. And we can step through each stage to understand what exactly is happening. In this case, we're removing employee ID and order number because they may not be required downstream. We're also calculating revenue based on units sold and unit price using SQL expression. And notice that there's two different paths. The cleaned version of the data is stored in Parquet by region in ADLS Gen 2, as well as aggregations are being made and stored in JSON format. Again, these things depend on use cases, but this is just to show you how you can design these pipelines that can cater to different use cases as well as personas. Next one is data preparation on Google Data Proc. This pipeline is designed to run on data proc, and it takes historical data and prepares it for a training of model. Let's step through the data transformations. Using this processor, we're filtering out some of the data that we don't really need during training the model. And this processor is removing future information that's present in historical data incident count. Using Spark SQL expressions, 
average response time is being converted from string to double. And this is because that's the target that the model is going to train on to predict. And finally, the data is stored in BigQuery. In this particular case, the data is being stored in BigQuery, so you can actually take the data set and build a model using AutoML in Google Cloud. Next up is Twitter to Kafka. This pipeline is designed to take Twitter data in real time, transform it, and send it to a Kafka cluster. Now, if you look at the preview data down below, Twitter API returns the responses in a list. Let's step through all the transformations to see how we can prep this data for downstream analysis or model experiments. So the first thing that happens is every single tweet record in the list is converted into its own record using field pivoter. Okay. And then conditionally, it's routed to different paths based on if the tweet was already deleted. This processor is parsing the XML within source field so that we have all the attributes laid out. And then this processor is designed to reduce the payload. And we flatten the nested structures, rename some of the fields, And then finally, this is what gets stored in Kafka. Okay. And one final one that I want to share with you guys is taking real-time data from Twitter and storing that in S3. Again, very similar transformations, but maybe applicable to a different use case where you would like to have as much data as possible for downstream analysis and building models. So that was just to show you how you can create these different pipelines that are cloud agnostic, platform agnostic, to ingest data, prep data, which is a very important step in a machine learning lifecycle. Now let's get to the heart of this presentation. Here are the two pipelines we're going to be working with today. Let's look at the first one. Now this is the same pipeline you saw earlier in my slides. Basically we're loading some data from S3, we're prepping it to create a model, then archive the data back in S3. Let's go ahead and preview and see what the data looks like. As you can see down below, the preview is actually happening against live DataBricks cluster that the pipeline is designed to run on. We'll just take a couple more seconds. There you go. So you might recognize this data set based on the column names. This is actually a very popular and famous Boston housing data set. Using this processor, we're removing C0 column, which is almost like a row ID and not really required to train the model. We're also renaming the target column to label, which is a requirement of Spark ML. And then this is where our our code is to train the model. To summarize this code in PySpark, it imports libraries including MLflow, it converts features into vectors, spits the data into training and testing to evaluate the model, it performs cross-validation and produces the best possible model based on the data and the hyperparameters provided, then it tracks features and hyperparameters in MLflow, registers the model, and finally, based on certain conditions, it transitions the experiment from staging to production. Let's get back to our pipeline. So now what we're going to do is actually run this pipeline as a job. Jobs allow you to run multiple instances of the same pipeline with different parameters. Here we go. Okay.
All right, so we're in action. This pipeline is actually going to get some data from SC bucket, which is this one right here. It's got one file with all the data. This is what the data looks like. And the pipeline will take a couple of minutes to run. In the meantime, let's look at MLflow and Databricks. This is where all the models are registered through the pipeline. And these are all the sample runs from before. Once the pipeline runs, we should see another version of model right in here. Now within MMflow, you can compare different model versions by clicking on these checkboxes and hitting compare. This will show you the parameters that were used to train the model. Okay. And these are all the attributes that have been logged through the transformer pipeline, as we saw in our PySpark code. Okay, now let's go ahead and check our pipeline run. There we go, a version 11. And this is where you can see all the details about the run itself. Okay, these are the, the features that we had logged through our PySpark code, hyperparameters. These are the metrics, R2 and RMSE, that were logged via um, a PySpark code in our pipeline. And here's the model that was registered during this run. Now let's see how we can automate the process of training the model if we have more data to train. And we're gonna do that using the second job. I'm gonna open that in a second separate window so we can have both of them side by side. So you can create these pipelines where you can orchestrate different jobs, check for statuses, and take action depending on the status of the job. So basically what's happening in this pipeline is it's looking for data in the same bucket as before. If there is data, it starts the model training job that we just looked at. Then it addresses some of the attributes, the metadata, and then checks the status of the job. Depending on the status, it either sends a success notification or a failure notification. And this pipeline is designed to run in a always on mode versus the other pipeline, which runs in batch mode. Okay, so there's no need to keep the, the training job running after it's complete. Okay, and until there's, no, there's more data uh, to be trained. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start this job. Doing so, we'll kick off our training job just like before, automatically. Okay, there we go. All right. And this is an orchestrator pipeline, so not, real, um, uh, not, not really a good way to understand what's happening. But basically, you can see that this is a job that's running right now, right? And that's our training job. And once this pipeline or this job completes, it's going to create another version of the model uh, in MLflow. Okay. These are all the runs and experiments. Um, Let's go back to the other view for models. And we should see a version 12 once the pipeline completes training the model. And again, um, this is a repeat just because I want to show how you can automate this. So what we're going to do next is upload a different data set which will re-kick off the training job. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and upload a second data set data and then uh, Boston housing open all the defaults are good okay let's go back and there we go so it should have kicked off the training job automatically there it is all right um, and if we look in here we should have version 11 um, that was from the first run 12 is the one that um, 
we just logged, and we should have another one for the uh, second set of data. Okay, so I'm not going to go ahead and uh, wait for everything to complete, but let's check the status of the pipeline. Again, it should have completed, and then we should see model 13. There you go. Oh, cool. So it basically passed our, uh, it satisfied the condition that we have in our code. And that's why this particular model has been promoted from staging to production. That's pretty cool. Let's compare the two models and see why that might be. Uh, you can see that on the latest version of the model, we have a better R2 score compared to the previous version. Nice. Okay, so in the last section, I'm going to show you how to design these pipelines. Go ahead and create a pipeline. We'll give it a name. Next, we'll pick the version of data collector we want to use for this pipeline. Create. And this will present a blank canvas. This is the way you design your pipelines. So the very first thing you want to do is select your data source. Lots of different options from Amazon S3 to Google PubSub to Azure Data Lake Storage, what have you. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and pick one at random, BigQuery. And then depending on your use case, you can select one or more processors that will transform your data. Again, lots of different options to choose from. Okay, let's just go ahead and pick one at random. And then pick another one. Okay, and then finally you would select your destination where you want the data to be stored. Again, lots of different options. Okay. Just go ahead and select one at random. Right, so it's as easy as that. And as far as what you need to configure, obviously depends on the origins, the data sources, the destinations, and the processing you need to do for your data sets. Okay, so hopefully that was fun, educational, and you learned something today. Streamsets is not a machine learning platform, but it does provide important capabilities and extensibility that it can help and expedite operations that some of the most crucial stages of the machine learning lifecycle and ML ops, along with technologies like Databricks and MLflow. Please don't forget to provide your feedback. It's really, really important to me as well as the summit organizers. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate your time. And I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have.